I'm delighted to be joining you today, even if in recorded form. I'd like to thank Dr. Chan for putting antimicrobial resistance at the forefront of the world health agenda. This is such a pressing health issue for the whole world and one which we need to focus on at every opportunity. I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers. The IFPMA is the interface between the research-based pharmaceutical industry and the World Health Organization and other intergovernmental organizations. Our aim is to work in partnership to create the international policy environment which encourages the discovery and development of new medicines and maximizes the access to those medicines for people across the world. That partnership will be vital if we're to continue to make progress in tackling infectious diseases and meet the challenge of antibiotic resistance. And it's worth reminding ourselves of the benefits antibiotics have brought. It's no exaggeration to say that antibiotics make modern medicines possible. Complex medical interventions like organ transplants, hip replacements, and even chemotherapy are all made possible or better by the use of antibiotics. But antibiotics lose their effectiveness over time as bacteria naturally evolve and mutate and so become resistant. And resistance is truly a global problem. In the U.S., hospital-acquired drug-resistant bacterial infections kill 63,000 patients each year. And drug-resistant bacterial infections cost $34 billion. In the EU, the multi-drug-resistant bacteria cause about 400,000 infections a year and at least 25,000 deaths and generate costs of 1.5 billion euros. But the most alarming levels of resistance are found in developing countries. One study showed that the rate of neonatal hospital-acquired infections in those countries was 3 to 20 times higher than in the developing world. The scale of the challenge is huge, and we have to understand that there's no simple solution. It will require a range of actions from all of us. The first of those actions is to develop new antibiotics. But we need to understand that it's not easy given the scientific and regulatory barriers to discovery. Over the past three decades, only two new classes of antibacterial medicines have been discovered, compared to 11 in the previous 50 years. And we have to recognize that even if we can increase these numbers, the task will never be complete because our most recently approved and the most effective drugs will gradually decline in efficacy and will need to replace them with new antibiotics. Discovery also needs to be underpinned by new financial mechanisms that allow companies to receive a return on their investment in the new drugs while limiting their use to situations of greatest need. Against this backdrop, an urgent task for all of us, pharmaceutical companies, payers, physicians, pharmacists, and patients, is to ensure that antibiotics are prescribed and used correctly in order to maximize their long-term efficacy. The member companies of the IFPMA take this role very seriously and adhere to the conditions of the IFPMA Code of Pharmaceutical Marketing Practices that are supplemented by member association and company codes. And the IFPMA is calling on other stakeholders to accept codes of practice with regard to the marketing and prescribing of all medicines, not just antibiotics. Alongside developing new antibiotics and advocating their more prudent use, we need to ensure that they're accessible to people throughout the world. This is a particular challenge in regions with poor healthcare infrastructure. Our industry is committed to working in partnership with governments and other stakeholders to develop the infrastructure which will secure the accessibility and availability of these medicines. It's clear that no one organization has all the answers to these pressing problems. We in the R&D-based pharmaceutical industry recognize our central role in this work, but we know that we can achieve much more with the support of other stakeholders 
across both the public and private sectors. If leaders in government, science, economics, public policy, intellectual property, and philanthropy can come together, we'll maximize the opportunities to develop and implement the creative solutions that will truly make a difference to tackling antimicrobial resistance. I believe World Health Day is an important way of bringing us all together to ensure we continue to focus relentlessly on this challenge and reinforce the work and the partnerships that will deliver results. Thank you.